Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, back in the Mayhem studio, at least for this week, here in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk professional wrestling with you guys and our people here in the studio with me. We got a couch full. First of all, Mutilator Larry is back with us watching the 205 Live, keeping us updated. Let us know about the latest FaceTime angle going on over there. I was actually, I have to switch back to that. I'm on the Facebook Oh, oh he's, he's actually hanging out with you guys in the chat room. Okay. So, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll get back to that next week. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and also, you saw him hanging out over there. If you guys are video, Jake Garrett back on the show after too, too long. Way too long. Way too at long. At least two weeks. We need to put you at least on a six-month cycle, at the least I'm down for that. Yeah, there you go. I'll come back every six months. Get that update, or or shorter, or whatever we do. Uh, I got be- got better at my guest planning in general. But uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, of course, uh, can we say wrestling legend in the Pittsburgh area? God no. <laughs> <laughs> I just know you have a history. <laughs> really? Yes. Is there a Wikipedia page? No. I'll start. I don't know. I. There's no. D- there could be. <laughs> Somebody can start one. Wait, I know they can. See, please don't because um, someone. I'm going to say please don't because me and my friends like to go and edit people's Wikipedia pages uh, to say some not very nice things. <laughs> very funny because you don't expect to see it as you're reading down and please, there's a lot. Please, can somebody in the chat room check if he has a Wikipedia <laughs> and start one? And and um, I mean, I'm sure you're on like cage, on cage match, cage match yeah. and stuff like that. So, I mean, everybody... Who set foot in the ring is pretty much on that side, yeah. but uh, but of course, but currently uh, Booker with Black Diamond Wrestling yes. in in uh, uh, where I'm wheeling, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's like the the hub. But yeah. yeah, though we like to say the whole um, the whole Northern Panhandle because we run pretty much. You own the Panhandle. I wouldn't say own because there are other wrestling companies, but we run like all up and down the Panhandle, both sides of the river. There you go. There you go. So check out Black Diamond Wrestling there. So, but this is a wrestling mayhem show. We're going to talk mostly mainstream pro wrestling here. Uh, Jake's actually going to join us on the uh, indie mayhem show. So watch out for that here later in the week. Make sure you subscribe to that. Uh, but of course, please uh, check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. A lot of great stuff going on, like the indie mayhem show, like our midweek wars, the raw wrap ups, and recently the Lucha Underground Quato Cup bracketology that was just released today. Uh, our guys got an advanced look at them, and, and we got to release that within uh, within an hour of of I think the bracket. It's actually officially coming out today. Uh, I know, Larry. You said you were watching it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I was getting, uh, I was getting some info on it because I'm still catching up on Lucha Underground. I'm still mm. on season one. I'm, I'm up to, like, but uh, I'm up to Aztec Warfare three in season three, um, so I'm almost I'm, there. I got some work. You get some work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put that in. It's put that a, in. Give me a long week. Yes. <laughs> Are you going to try to do it like a season and a weekend like I tried doing? Well, I'm, I'm going to try and dedicate a day where I stay away from WWE Network and all that stuff and I'll just watch that's, a few episodes. That's why I got rid of some. Uh, I think Tina was asking about <coughs> New Japan if we were following uh, uh, Dominion. And I was like, I can't keep up with it and all the There's other too stuff. Much stuff. I just, it was, too I much was. Stuff. And then Riz is watching Shakaratopia, and I'm, I'm glad he is. So somebody's keeping an yeah. eye on things going over yeah, there. I'm not even watching NXT at this point. Right. And then we were just talking with uh, uh, Vin Gerardo for Powerbomb TV a couple weeks ago. They just had their event, over, the big event over the weekend. And I'm just like, there's there's too much wrestling, mm-hmm. you know, which is like great for and That's a different discussion. But anyways, this show, we're glad you joined us and found the time and, and canceled your New Japan as well to, to support our Patreon and such. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> that's completely what happened, right? Yes. Um, at uh, WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and uh, YouTube page. Please follow the Wrestling Mayhem Show group. And uh, as I'm panicking because I realize I don't have my notes up to realize everybody on Patreon, uh, please drop us a line at that email address. Good times. 
He's the only one that knows how to do it. Uh, good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We don't have a lot of our regulars this, nope. this week. so so. Um, but uh, And also 412-206-WMS0. And, um, and our... No, oh, I said our email address. That's right. Flip that. Did I mention the Facebook group? Join the Facebook group, Wrestling Mayhem Show. A lot of great discussion and stories there. A lot of you guys sharing uh, wrestling events and videos and, and things this week. Um, so I, I appreciate that a little bit of variety going on there, and and that way it's not all just Pittsburgh stuff too, because I feel like we push our Pittsburgh agenda a lot, <laughs> and and you know between you know God we talk about IWC and RWA all the freaking time on here, and and everything else like PWX that that we go and attend. Um, so it's good that we're seeing like like I saw a show from New Jersey pop up, you know, not that we're all attending it, but but especially things that have like online. Like there was a full show I think somebody posted too, so we really appreciate that and seeing. A lot of different names out there as well so so thank you so much you guys for doing that also uh thanks to our friends at the 405 media.com god bless them for still carrying us because i don't know if we really fit in with that network but they play us every night at uh, 9 p.m pacific time on their stream uh so there's that that's still the middle of rush hour too over that's there it's the middle of rush hour <laughs> yeah, the ipm right yeah exactly which is of course midnight here on the east coast so if you want to just drop in and hear the subtle sounds of the mayhem nation uh uh just tune in the 405 media.com and they got other a lot of other great shows including our own actually um uh awesome cast is over there as well that is i believe every morning at 9 a.m pacific time which is noon here i'm seeing a pattern here which That's also smart. is probably rush hour, rush hour in yeah. la so <laughs> good uh, job <laughs> 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 That's a widespread right like we're on at 3 a.m also, probably rush hour in LA. I just need to find something for lunchtime. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Lunch mayhem show. Let's do it. Thank you, of course, also to our Patreon supporters uh, supporting the show financially. We really do appreciate it. You guys are putting your your money where our mouths are, or at least our microphones are. Uh, thank you, of course, to Bo Diggity. Ooh. I, I just grabbed a really old show because there's only like two Patreons on here because <laughs> it's him and Garza who doesn't do it anymore. Uh, so we'll fix that. Also, off the top of my head, thank you to the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment, Ed Burke, uh, Christopher Bishop, Tina Keys. Uh, I don't think Mike's on there anymore. Bob, Bob uh, Bobby F. J. Town, Alex Cars, and Tragar. I think I got all you guys. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Um, and if you guys want to support the show financially, especially especially certain co-executive producers that have been watching the shows lately and said they might put money our way, uh, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. We appreciate any support you guys do. And you become our bosses and you get to uh, get a little more say and you get to get uh uh at the five dollar level jake garrett's story about somebody whiffing um a dive catch uh, on a concrete floor in manessa pa <laughs> so it's good shit. you know fun stories like that <laughs> and we talked about cell phone cell phone plans more exciting than that sounds maybe by a tiny bit uh but anyways oh shout out to my wife who's not here uh, she, I got, I got buttons. I, I just noticed them on the camera. So if you're wondering what's going on here, they made buttons in in, in her teen library class today. So uh, that's that's what's what going are on. they? I got some Spider Man. I don't know. She handed me this nice. one. Is she handed me this one? And she says it's a zombie sword. So uh, that that one. And also available July 29th, which is not true because I'll be at Replay FX July 29th. <laughs> so. What, what, that, sure. Um, <laughs> that's how I should like like do my bookings. Say I'm available. You know, please, please book me for a, a gig. Book me here. I mean, wrestlers can do that, too. They can just put on the table. Hey, I'm available. Yeah. You know, so maybe Jackson Argos put that on. Jackson there. Argos. <laughs> Jackson, Jackson, are you looking for a gig on July 29th? I believe that's a Saturday. So uh, anyways, let's get into the show. Let's talk wrestling at least somewhat. We, we, we like half talked about, I think, all the things we wanted to beforehand. And there's a lot of, oh, shit, we should save this for the show. <laughs> um, so do you want to talk about FaceTime? Or bears, or <laughs> glow. I forget what. Oh, glow or or whatnot. Um, I, actually, let's talk about glow. Okay. Because I, I don't think we've addressed it since like early announcements of people that were going to be on the show. Uh, we we've, we've seen the trailer uh, last couple months, and I know here in Pittsburgh, uh, I've been astonished at, at how many um um uh, 
billboards there are for this. Mark Maron's a part of this. Um, I think is her name Allison Bree from Community is I, part I'm of it. I barely recognize her in the trailer. I've watched it several times, and I was like, oh, she's in that. I, I, I haven't like pointed her out, right? Um, this looks like a fantastic show by the makers of Orange is the New Black, which if you haven't watched that, you're, you're really missing out on something really fun there. Um, I mean, you guys have all seen the trailer, right? Like, what do you, what do you kind of think going out to this? Uh, uh, Jake, have you, did you see any of the glow stuff back in the day? Yeah. Or, I mean, this, yeah, like I, <clears throat> I'm really familiar. Like I remember it was on channel 22 here in Pittsburgh, WPTT at the time, non-existent now. Um, but yeah, like it aired, uh, I want to say like Saturday nights, like really late, like 10, maybe 11 o'clock. Uh, but yeah, like, cause it was wrestling. I watched it, it wrestling wise. It wasn't good oh. wrestling, but looking back, man, that's an entertaining show. It was a real thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, this, yeah. This is based on, I, a thought, story. I thought this was, it fictitious. was, no, it was run by a guy named no David McLean. Um, and he did glow. And then he also did wow, which was women of wrestling or women warriors of wrestling or mm-hmm. something like that. Uh, which is like a second attempt to which I make think, it run, but I same think, same talent. I think somebody from that we know from the Scare House um, was in the casting of that second one. Hmm. Um, I had a conversation. Well, no, they were not ago. not the Wow that was uh, a couple of years ago. This was also back in the eighties, like right around the oh, same in the eighties. But there, yeah, there was one. There was one like maybe ten years ago. They were trying yeah. or something, right? Yeah. So and she was a part of that casting yeah. that just never got off the yeah. ground. So that yeah, was the same around the same time as like Wrestlelicious. And, yeah. Uh, oh, we remember Wrestlelicious. We had our own Wrestlelicious raps on this show. We did on um, Counting the Lights. <laughs> Everybody did, right? Yeah. You, you we haven't seen this, have you, Larry? No. Oh, we need to show you some Wrestlelicious. <laughs> oh dear. Oh man, it was Re- a, it was a guy that won the lottery, and he put all of his money. I mean, I'm you know, sure he did a bunch of other insane stuff, but one thing is he was trying to fund a women's wrestling organization that was in pretty much in the spirit of Glow, right? Yeah, like very over the top characters, yeah. right? So, I mean, it, it can't he be. Got, he got Jimmy Hart involved. So, like, they, there was Hart. there was a wrestling mind behind it, mm-hmm. um, and some great talent. Some, some 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 girls that really did a yeah. lot of stuff came out of that. Uh, I'm trying to remember who they were, but uh, Daisy Hayes was uh, Marley Sebastian. Okay, okay. Um, L- Lacey and Rain, who both worked with Ring of Honor and IWA Mid South, were on it. Um, I want to say uh, Daphne might have been on it. I, th- I think she was too. Like, was she maybe the vampire character? Yeah, because they they all changed. Like, they didn't they didn't use their regular their regular gimmicks. Yeah. Yeah, Lacey Von Erich. Yeah, she was, was on. Was a part of it, uh, which she was part of TNA at least. So, whatever you think of that. But yeah, and and it proved the old adage that the best way to make a little money with pro wrestling is start with a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was, there was that. tends to help. Yeah, uh, I mean, this was something that we were like looking forward to because it just looks so absolutely over the top. If you're on video here, I will have it up here in a moment. I'll, at least a little bit of the promos of it. Uh, I mean, it was, it was you know, uh, you can think kind of precursor to Lucha Underground that it was like a soundstage studio wrestling show for the most part, right? Yeah. I mean, wow, there's... these cuts, man. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Look at that camera work, right? Early nineties. Hey, well, but this was this is uploaded early two thousand. This is uploaded in two. No, this is late two thousand. This is two thousand nine. Oh, yeah, look J- at that. Jimmy Hart. Yeah, Jimmy Hart was there. Um, I mean, it was. I mean, and it, there were there were parts in there where where you like there were these that one referee was that Summer Ray. <laughs> oh, really? It... Wait, wait. Now I want to go back. Yeah, go back. Now I want to go back. Hold on, hold on. Although these characters get pretty crazy. The one on our left. Hold on. That one here. I'm on the farm girl. It might be too late. You want to go back? No, it just uh, looks like every blonde uh, girl. Yeah, it just looks like every blonde girl in wrestling. Um, You know, but I mean, gotta remember, this is like around the divas era. Yeah. So it it felt like it kind of more capitalized on that kind of stuff. So there's a vampire. That wasn't that wasn't uh, Daphne, but I feel like she was a part of it. But yeah, and they all sang too. Um. Yeah, Layla. Layla was somebody, wasn't she? No, because she was in in WWE at that time. Well, I mean, there was a character named Layla. Oh, so but she kind of looked familiar. Um, there was a superhero. It was, and there was a wrestlerious rap. So you you need to check that before you get to Lucha Underground. 
Oh, geez. <laughs> it's okay. There's like I'm five still... episodes of this, so. Okay. All right. <laughs> other one, actually. Not 43. The other interesting thing is to watch the old MTV uh, promotion. A w, uh, w, Wrestling, w, uh, Wrestling, Wrestling Society X. Yes. It, again, like five, six episodes. Kind of that studio soundstage stuff. Um, the as, and and on the top of it is actually uh, Seth Rollins is on it. Yeah, I think about because him and Jake, Jimmy Jacobs, I think, were a part of it. Uh, had live bands. Had unfortunately bands commentating. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it works because like you'll get a guy like Zach Wild. Uh, he did commentary on one, and he he likes wrestling, mm. but his stuff like he's late eighties WWE. He's Ultimate Warrior, Undertaker, those and guys. This was like, you know, all those flippy Ring of Honor guys were yeah. popping up in this, right? Uh and and he just didn't really know what yeah. How to deal with it. So And also like they used really bad special effects that don't belong in oh, wrestling. So bad. It was just like like all of the horrible, horrible cuts that you would hate in a TV show. Because I mean I, I don't know you know, when I watch wrestling, and I only know some, like, they, they minimize it a bit on uh, Lucha Underground. But, like, sometimes if there's, like, a cut and, then you, you know, Ooh. you can tell when people are not in position, right? This one uh, uh, famously had a uh, piranha match with uh, Vampiro and a guy that would later be known as Mil Martez. Uh, so there's a little bit of... Actually, I think that... Is that um, uh, Matt Seidel? Yeah. Yeah. Like, a lot of great talent in this. So, I, I mean, these are great little kind of diversions uh, you know it, we, again i just i just see them as the precursor to lucha underground that we have today like that lucha is the one that got it right as far as this studio wrestling yeah. you know produced thing like this you know trying to trying to get a, a foot in in a, in, a, in a wwe world seth rollins cole cabana matt cross teddy hart matt seidel sarah del rey were all on wrestling society x tina is the wrestling society x go-to on this one Wow. It was so long ago, probably before I knew who any of those people were. <laughs> you know, because I don't think, you know, when was this? This was, I don't have a time on this. Like probably 2005 ish? Somewhere around there, yeah. I was just discovering indie wrestling at this point. And <laughs> that was, that was uh, another, that was like Kevin Kleinrock was the guy behind that. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, uh, I think LB was just telling me about this amazing guy called Samoa Joe on Ring of Honor <laughs> and this thing called Ring of Honor. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it's, it's just, that's amazing. It, it's just a nice little time capsule in there. So, um, how the hell did we get to this? There was something else we, we were, were talking about. We were talking about a Netflix show. A Netflix show. Yeah. Oh, Glow. But the show <laughs> looks great, right? Show does I mean, great. Mark Madden's attached to a pro wrestling show. Like, it doesn't look like it's, you know, tongue in cheek about wrestling. Well, I think, I, I don't think we're, I don't think it's about the, the finished product. I think it's no. about, yeah, it's going to be about like the people who were making, yeah. The production. Yeah. yeah and I, that. I, that I think is going to be, is why I want to watch it. Um, I mean, you gotta, you gotta think, I mean, it, Orange New Black also based on a true story, right? right? Obviously they're taking liberties with it. Um, and based on a book about the true story too. Uh, but you know, again, this is something where they'll probably take some liberties with it. Cause I mean, glow only lasts so long. Yeah. So how do you get more than one season out of that? We'll see. Well, they could be inventive with it. I remember I remember being on the air for like a while, like a couple of years. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that it was actually around that long. Just it kept air, you know, they might have kept airing because they had it in syndication. Yeah, those yeah. those will those will go on they, forever. Now they did wind up on um like the last big AWA event. Uh which was like an ultra clash or a super clash or Is that on the network? It might be. I think I found one of those on the network, and there was a where glow. There is a where there is a glow match on the that uh, super card. So I don't know if a lot of people know this, but if you go under, is it in the vault? Because the AWA stuff is listed really weird. Because like Super Clash isn't listed on their like pay per views. Like you you go under and and they're listed as episodes, but it's Wrestle Rock and Super Clash yeah, and like things that. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They're just episodes, but then you go look and they're like four hour events in baseball stadiums. Yeah. So so there's there's weird little gems in WWE Network these days, especially with that old stuff, because they just don't fit into that. It's it's not under pay per views. It's not under pay per views. It's under like like the old vault stuff. And everything like where you go see Smoky Mountain Wrestling and things like that. AWA. A AWA. Yeah, it was AWA. So I that I just found it by accident. The first one, one up was Super Clash Three. Yeah, makes it's sense. the first one on the list. 
but there's a lot of other kind of random stuff too, right? Yeah, there's uh, AWA All Stars. They're, they're sequential. Okay. So it's going back from 1988, like December of 1988 to 83. There's not many things. No, no. So if, if you like can, a dozen. yeah, like if you, the problem, but, um, the big problem is because they were on ESPN. Uh, AWA was on ESPN. AW like ESPN owns that library. That, yeah, that well, that TV. There's an ESPN ep- uh, episode on there. It's ESPN Championship Wrestling. Yeah, yeah, because that, that was that was that's one. That's one of them. On yeah, there. that was that was their TV, and they had the four o'clock time slot for years. And depending on what the, how the deal went to, yeah. like maybe they don't own all of it. Yeah, you know what I or mean. Or they might not like, have kept all of it. That's true too. That's true too. I mean, that's. Mm-hmm. A, Georgia Championship Wrestling. They recorded over all the tapes. Uh, studio Wrestling here in Pittsburgh. Yeah. It's one of the big things about that. That's where, I, you know, we found a little bit of footage. It's not the studio, but it's them. Yeah. You know, and it, it, at Civic Arena, we're just like, ooh, okay, we found a gold mine here. You yeah. Know? So I mean, that's it, yeah, it's amazing. The fact that Paul Ellering had a uh, was smart enough to get a camera set up for Last Battle of Atlanta and sat on it for thirty years until they finally like. He uh, sold that to WWE so mm-hmm. they could put it up on the network. That was a match that people were dying to see and talked about for years. Mm-hmm. And then it finally got released for the public to see. And, and, and they, they labeled it as like the precursor to Hell in a Cell, yeah. right? And, and everything. So, I, yeah, I mean, that's, that's you know, and you can you can get on WWE about revisionist history and everything, but if they won, they're allowed to, right? Yeah. Uh, but, man, they their preservation of wrestling like going back and what was it it was it like the Vern Gagne like workout tapes or whatever yeah like that they were on the the the, the uh, uh collections a, a few months ago like I watched the full 10 minutes of it something like this is fascinating this is what they did with wrestlers back then right yeah. um you know in the, in that early tv days uh it, it just it just absolutely fascinating to watch but today we get bears <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, I'm really looking forward to that. I think it's going to be, you know, I, I, I can't, I, I can't imagine the show not, not being great, uh, with all the vines behind it and everything. So, so we, we have to do a recap show on that <laughs> now of, of, because we need more shows uh, <laughs> on here, <laughs> but looking forward to that, that comes out, I think June 23rd. So in the next week, next two weeks, next I think, two weeks? Yeah. Yeah. I think it probably end next week. So, uh, uh-huh. Looking, looking forward yeah. to that. I'm sure us wrestling well, fans will binge that. I know, yeah, I know how I'm going to spend the last couple of days of my vacation. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely, I'm going to try to squeeze it in while I'm out, uh, out in Nebraska. Hopefully, I have internet out there. Oh God! <laughs> so they might have the internet. They in Nebraska. might have the internet. Thank I, you, hotspots. Thank you. Well, I, hey, the, the the that is the state that we made fun of for years uh, on Awesome Cast. Because we just like speculated that there was no technology in Nebraska. Now I might have to go to Nebraska <laughs> once a year. There has to be because uh, <laughs> we found like, the University of Nebraska. Right, right. There absolutely. has to be like, around there. This is formula. Where, it, it has to be technology. Wherever that is, but that might be the only part of the state that has it. That's true. That's true. Um, this is Lincoln. It's 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 uh, two hours from Omaha, which it seems to be the only big town there. But yeah, we'll see. It'll be interesting. I, I've never been to that part of America, so there's lots of corn. Yeah. Well, the question is, can I find pro wrestling? You should be searching. Well, not like right now, but like you should start your search not like yeah. soon to find out. I have not been successful in finding indie wrestling in my travels this year. Hmm. Like anything that I can get to. Like California, there are ones, but it's like I got to go an hour and a half away and I don't get off of my work on a Friday, Saturday until like five o'clock. Yeah. Right. Or six o'clock, depending on, on the event. Uh, so it has to be something quasi nearby to, to, to get to. Uh, that's I. You know, like I talk about California, I found that really horrible blood show at Sun City. It was sixteen people. You know, it, you know things like that. You know, which is fantastic for all the wrong reasons. But, <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Didn't have any like I actually I actually hit up uh, uh, Shima uh, when I was in Peoria. I mean, he's in Chicago, right? I'm yeah. like, he's two hours away. I'm like, hey, do you know any Indies in 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 Peoria? And he's like, I don't even know where Peoria is. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh, you're out there." I was like, yeah, okay, I guess so. Uh, so I figured, like, maybe he took a booking out there or something at some point. You know, it's you know, he comes all the way to Pittsburgh. I'm sure he'd go two hours for a PR. Maybe there's show, a reason right? he comes all the way to Pittsburgh. Maybe there's a reason. I know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. That might be. I, go going out on a limb. You can fly from Chicago to Pittsburgh. 
I doubt you can fly from Chicago to Peoria. I think you can. I, I mean, I flew from... You probably have to jump out of the airplane. I, I flew from Charlotte to Peoria. Oh, so, really? Oh, yeah. They had to come back through Dallas on the way back, though, but uh, that was a nightmare. But anyways... Birmingham, Pittsburgh, Charlotte, Birmingham, Birmingham, Houston, Pittsburgh. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm thankful. I'm going. I'm actually going through Chicago to uh, and from Nebraska, so it actually makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's a straight line. Yeah, at yeah. At least. Uh, anyways, enough about my travel schedule. Um, um. So we we were we were trying to work our heads around a piece of technology that that happened last night on the show. Did they do it again tonight? Did they do the FaceTime no, thing they again played, tonight? No, they played a re, uh, uh, they just a recap. Recap. So so there was um you know completely quasi stealing Tyler Breeze's gimmick because he's not using it anymore uh to be honest he's, doing, the he's on the greater things he's yes. uh to be to be honest yes. uh Alicia Fox facetiming with Noam Dar last night which was like oh okay that's a cool way to get around her injury versus mm-hmm. wow this is getting annoying uh you know I I what I get I get doing it but did it really need to be uh airplayed quote quote unquote airplayed to the house speakers like i was joking that uh that it, it feels like they accidentally did an apple airplay to to the sound system again you know and uh and forgot to turn it off uh so uh but interesting because it looked like it was air because the camera was live i feel like it would have been it would have been lost on the crowd if they didn't you know it like kind of right. like the house of horrors match right but but i mean this is also we just did a week before the thing where samoa joe whispered to paul Heyman. Before, but that was on the camera, which I bet they were. It playing was on the over, camera, over and this. this could have been on the camera, at least patched into the internal sound and everything. We're getting real technical around wrestling, but um, it, it was weird. It was absolutely weird, and I noticed his thumb was over, like his his thumb was very awkwardly over the video and the promo in the back. So I think he was covering up. Like I don't think they did a FaceTime there. Like I think that was a pre-recorded video. Maybe. And I think he covered up the fact that there was nothing in the corner. Like somebody was like, "Hey, people will know that's not FaceTime because you had to have that thing in the corner, the video in the corner, right?" But out there, like that video was live and not a pre-recorded. They could have. Uh, don't worry, that's the dog. <laughs> the dog's the dog's doing his asthma thing. Um, but. Uh, it, it it was it was interesting and just one of those things that I don't think came off very well uh, with them. So, yeah. but uh, again, interesting way to to get get around an injury. So, I mean, how did you guys think it came off? I was fine with it. I mean, it was kind of a squash match. Well, yeah, like the whole purpose of it was kind of dumb. Yeah, I don't, like, I, I don't know. It, it it killed some time, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it seems like a lot of work to kill some time. Mm-hmm. Like, but um, um, yeah, and and, and and just just announced apparently Aries uh, announced according to Brandon here that he's taking time off with his leg and neck issues, which I don't know if that's legit or storyline. I don't know because I know they were working it in the story. So yeah, but. and seeing as how he like he yeah. was just out for yeah, he is an extended period. He had a broken mm-hmm. eye or, uh, orbital. Yeah, soccer, yeah. Right? yeah. So they, that's unfortunate, and that kind of probably kind of explains why uh, that went the way it did uh, uh, for that. Because I mean, we were all kind of expecting Aries to kind yeah. of pull through on that one. Yeah. So um, interesting. Uh, the other thing I had in my head was bears. <laughs> this I I loved the bears the 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 bear thing on Raw last night um, as far as the announcers go. I love the entrance. Everything about that entrance. The, the, yeah. The, the like, video, the, the music. Like, Miz was just, like, slowly lowering his glasses. Like, what the fuck? Right. I and mean, it's, it was great. They got me the week, the week before because I'm like, oh, he's the bear. Right? And we, we talked about that. And and that they, they brought it, went back to the well on this. Um, and, and it was the greatest thing until, like, we're doing the same thing where it's not really him. Right? Yeah. But, which, whoever was in there. Was doing Dean Ambrose mannerisms. Yeah, like it, it felt like him, right? Yeah. Like they they actually kind of tried to line it up. Here's what I want to know: Was Ambrose hiding under the ring in a bear costume the entire time? Yeah, he had to have because he had to have been sweating his ass off. <laughs> well, that's not the worst thing, you know. Well, but uh, I, I, I think I think Undertaker had to hide under the ring an entire Raw one time. But too, he wasn't so. wearing a giant no, uh, furry the- bear costume. A lot of times, a lot of times, like they'll do a thing where 
because um, like I've seen them put Hornswoggle under the ring on right, live events right. where like they sneak them out. Basically, yeah, like <laughs> ring crew, a bunch of guys in overalls, yeah, will bring a uh, a bin to ringside. <laughs> oh, so it gets changed under the ring. No, they're in. No, no. They're they're oh, already in the bin. They're in the bin, <laughs> and they roll they 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 roll it down to to ringside, and they'll they'll stop for a second. And everyone and these guys are all standing around it, so you can't see that they roll out from the bottom of it, uh, lift the uh, lift the apron, and they go into the ring right God, there. Is that how Taker does it all? Yeah, and then they take the cart all the way around the ring, and then out. Yeah. Just to, just to kind of cover it up, right? Yep. And also, something like that happens. Usually, you know, notice they're always playing videos on, in between or, or mm-hmm. something's happening. How many times have you, like, looked up at the screen and realized they changed stuff or, or set up Miss TV or in the ring while you're watching a live Raw? Yeah. yeah. Like, they're really good at that misdirection uh, as far as that goes. And how quick they are with changing the ropes, changing mm-hmm. the aprons. Neville's pyro and little segments while they're changing the ropes purple yeah. for 205 Live. Like yeah. see, Seeing the yeah. fact that they're not done with the ring when like Neville's coming out at the beginning of 205 Live was incredible. <laughs> it was pretty funny. And then watching yeah. how they're like shooting him on the ramp specifically in ways to cover up that they're still working on the ring. Working on the ring. That's great. Uh, you know, you know, seeing that kind of uh, co- coordination uh, there so um the, so so uh, the uh the okay. under the ring thing um this goes back to the late 80s maybe early 90s uh memphis uh mid southern whatever 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 lawler's territory was uh, the it's a main event is cage match uh jerry lawler versus austin idol and their cage got set up it was on the floor and it surrounded the whole ring Mm -hmm. and it was hair versus hair lawler versus uh idol um paul Heyman is idol's manager but he's outside the cage so he can't get in so there's no you know jerry lawler's jerry lawler's going to beat austin idol end of the mat like coming up the to for the finish of the match tommy rich rolls out from under the ring he's under the ring all night, the whole show. Jeez. Right. Pops out. They beat up Lawler, pile driver, pin him, referees. Like, well, there's no rules because it's a cage. No one's supposed to be able to get in. So if they're if they're in, they're allowed to be there. Mm-hmm. They shave Lawler's head. There's almost a riot. Right. But he's under the ring two and a half, three hours. That's nuts. So yeah. So you can now have, you can now they it. now they bring him out. A few minutes before the segment, mm-hmm. it used to be, if we're, we're going to do this spot, you're there all night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, wasn't there something, isn't there a story about, like, Mick Foley being under the ring and he, like, like fell asleep or something? Like, for a spot? Uh, I think it's in his first book, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that might have been, like, WCW days where things were weird, but, um, but yeah. I mean, it, you, you always just imagine, just like, yeah, just hanging out and have a TV monitor and, you know, having a sandwich. <laughs> I, I don't know why, I just imagine they always have a packed lunch. I would at least take a couple of bottles of water and a pillow, and an extra bottle for yeah facilities. That's what the bottle of water is for. You finish the oh, bottle. Oh, rolls around. I got you. There's always that bin of Gary- Gatorades that they pull out. Gatorade. You know what? <laughs> Sorry, water boy. Don't oh, drink. Okay. Don't drink the yellow one. Don't drink the yellow. One. No, never do that. It's dark under there. It's dark <laughs> under there. So, anyways, um, <laughs> anything else from from wrestling this week? I know it, it, it was we we got we got money in the bank this week. So, which I keep forgetting, if there's any other matches than the Money in the Bank matches. Um, is that weird? Jinder Mahal yeah. is defending the title, of course. Well, yeah, um, against Randy. Randy, who just snuck in our RKO tonight. Yep, yep. Just I'm like well, they do come from out of nowhere. They just, do. Just, they, yeah, they sure do. Just like that kid in the pool. Yep. Which they showed that on on spoiler like, alert. Spoiler <laughs> alert. It's his, it's his stepson. It's, it's not like it's not like it's he just, just hops some neighbor's fence. Yeah. Just, yeah. Well, they show him hanging out in the pool at the beginning of the video. Yeah. They're just like, they're like, hey, there's Randy Orton hanging out. They're like, ah, oh, people are playing. This kid's gonna jump in. Wow. So I mean, hey, it's 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 fun. It's fun. Um, other than that, I mean, we I think we have a tag match, New Day and Usos. Or they weren't doing anything yeah. more than that at all. It think. was a, it was a eight man tag. It was. Tonight it was an eight man. Yeah. Oh, are you talking about for money in the bank? For money in the bank, okay. we're talking about yeah. Right. 
Uh, so there's that. Of course, the Money in the Bank matches. Um, and uh, Lana and Naomi for the belt for some reason. Uh, so I... I want to see what we've seen her in a tag match, well, like yeah. a six person, eight person tag match one time. So I, I kind of want to see what she can do. And then, you know, what are they going to do with her at, yeah, outside of Rusev? How? How did she get the title match? Like, did she win? No, she, she, she pissed off Naomi. Yeah, she came out and insulted her. Is it that easy? Yeah, it yep. is easy. Well, as <laughs> uh, as Becky Lynch pointed out on a, on on talking smack um uh, bad behavior is rewarded on this show hmm. so which is i like that that was pointed out because i mean really it's it, it's, it's you true. can go through earn a title shot or just piss somebody off until they 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 get you in there which yep. like i understand if you piss someone off you get them like oh okay well you've angered me now i want to beat you up yeah by the way the big prize isn't on the line. I just want to beat you up. Right, or at least you get the match and the person beats you, you get a title. Yeah. Card, right? I mean, that makes absolute sense. Um, is this right? This I only see four matches. So there's five matches. but There's only... the women's match, uh, ladder match. Right, but they're not, like, there's not a full match listing on their site like there usually is. No. So I'm a little the, kind of thrown um, off by this. And today would have been the last day they could have announced anything. They kind of slide some in through the week, it seems. Yeah. Oh, they 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 will, but yeah. like you have you have X number of hours of TV, mm-hmm. and the purpose of TV is to get interest for the pay per view. Maybe you should use it for that purpose. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, just throw everybody in tag matches and let's see how it goes. Um, I just want to point out because I, you know, partially is in mind because I did just kind of just wanted to throw something on the other day because uh, I was just super tired. Wanted something on the TV and, and they were playing last year's Money in the Bank. And I'm sad I didn't see this because this is on the kickoff show because I, I just I just saw this picture. And I remember how much how much fun this was. Um, Golden Truth versus Bree Zango from the kickoff show last year. Do you remember what happened in that one? Mm-mm. That was the one where um, they left them in the uh, tanning bed too long, and they came out with sunburns. What? Yeah, and they were like playing it like they didn't want to take, get hit or take a bump or anything because they had sunburns. It was like that's funny. It oh was the God. highlight of the night, like back when we had amazing kickoff shows, right? Uh, or kickoff matches. I mean, this is also the era, of, probably era of We LC too. Uh, so, so there's that, um, you know, the one with, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, you'll love it when you get to the mill, um, Masquerita Sagrada matches, by the way. I've seen one. You've seen one. There's one, there's one where he's against Famous B that gets a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> cause this basically turns into VLC, uh, level yeah. of craziness. Um, but other than that, uh, you know, is this. Does Jinder Mahal keep the belt? We got India coming up, don't I th- we? I think like, he, they have yeah, a tour coming up. So he's going to keep the belt till at least SummerSlam. Wow, really? I, I think so. I, I I like the idea of Jinder as champ. Hmm. I just I for me, I wish they would have started the build like two weeks earlier. Let him run through a couple of guys. He came out of nowhere. Yeah, he he, he was he was you know what he was the guy that got beat up at WrestleMania by uh, what's his, uh, Mojo's friend? Yeah. And the the football, what the hell? Rob Gronkowski. Uh, yeah, Ron Cos- yeah the, thank you. Yeah. And and to a month later, getting a uh, you know winning a title shot and and winning the title out of nowhere. Yeah. So like for me, and I don't mean like you need six months, but like if if you start putting this guy on the path two weeks earlier, mm-hmm. then a lot more people are going to say. Oh, this guy is a threat. He could get this done. What's well, like? I've had the argument with Mike on Raw Rap about Samoa Joe. It's like he doesn't win anything. Da 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 da. It's like he's being badass for the last like three months. He's coming out and hurting yeah. Seth Rollins. No, he didn't get a pin in a match, but he's a badass. He he's... and while surprising is believable. Yeah, said he gets this match with Brock. Lesnar. He's one of the few things that's been being done right on Raw. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in WWE in general. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of it's just him and him, like his own. He's just getting more free reign like, oh, yeah. with his promos and all that stuff. They're letting him be Samoa Joe. Yeah. And yeah. and even to the point when they had the pull part with Brock, he had, didn't he headbutt him? He headbutted him and then he kicked him in the face. Which, and he actually made contact with that Which kick. is how they started. Brock was 
pissed. Which is how they started him and Kurt Angle when they met up in TNA. Yeah. Because Kurt had come in, Samoa Joe was running through. I think Samoa Joe might have been undefeated at the time, or recently, you know, just undefeated. And was doing his feuds with AJ Styles yeah. and Christopher Daniels over Super Indy, not Super Indy. What is it? X Division. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, and and you know, it was that like you want to see these guys beat each other up. Like this, it was, it felt serious. It feels like this Brock. Fest. This feud should go to SummerSlam. It probably won't, but it should. I hope it does. It, it really like that because this this is a match that belonged on SummerSlam. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's a little it's too far for WrestleMania. All they but, have like, to do, it's all they have to do is uh, like a non finish. Yeah, they just have to have a screwy finish. <laughs> yeah, double I mean, DQ. Listen, listen. Your show is yeah. called Great Balls of Fire. I expect nothing but shenanigans. This is as I've been saying. This is the Saturday night's main event of of wrestling shows, right? Because these are the shows where. It basically just sets us up. We ha- we're back to the long builds to the big shows. Yeah. Because we have these shows that are as you know, they're Monday Night Raws. They're they're better Raws. And we kind of knew we were gonna get to this, you know, <laughs> at this point. Um and I mean look, I, I, we're missing it feels like half a card on Money in the Bank. And yeah. maybe we'll get it. No, wait, I keep forgetting. Golden Truth was on the other show, so I keep thinking they're going to come out on this one. I'm I'm waiting for. Did they do anything with Zack Ryder after that little promo? No, I think he came in them? and said, "Hey, okay. buddy, I'm here." I'm wait. I'm wait. I'm waiting for a heel turn. You think it's happening? I, I yeah. I think. Do, do they turn? Do they turn Zack? Yeah. On? Yeah. Yeah. He's I, had a heel beard for a year. He's, come he's on. been <laughs> like if if you look at those little um, documentaries that are on the network of him, like during his rehab, he's really bitter. Mm-hmm. And like, I think he'd be really good as a heel right now. And he's got a good story with that because I mean, we've already had the story of him getting bumped down to NXT, mm-hmm. and then all the success that Mojo's had after Zach gets injured, right? And... Perfect jealousy angle, yeah. right? So, yeah. which I think I think that would be probably good for both of them, yeah. to do something interesting there. So I don't know how. I'm... Hey, you know what? In a world where Jinder Mahal is the WWE champion. <laughs> And America I mean, Alpha is not on TV. And American Alpha yeah. is not on TV for some reason for over a month. Yeah, I, there was um uh, somebody had posted in uh in a uh, results from I think it was the first or second uh, uh, NXT Cleveland, and Jason Jordan was, came out and they were talking about like people were chanting "Who are you?" which makes me sad. This oh. is pre American Alpha. Oh, okay. I think this might have been post him splitting with um uh ten guy that we haven't seen in a few weeks. I realize. Um, oh yeah, Ty Dillinger is on the main roster. Yeah, Ty Dillinger. I keep forgetting, right? Yeah, Where, where's he been? Um, probably main event or superstar. He's got a big build do. coming. He's got a big. I mean, <laughs> he could be, dude. Ty Dillinger could be WWE champion by the end of the year. Anything is possible. At least, yeah. at least SmackDown is keeping up with the anybody. Anything is possible. Anybody could get this. And and we can give them the ball and see where we can go with this. You right? never know what that dirt's going to ricochet off of. <laughs> <laughs> Road dog dartboard, yes. But uh okay, let, let's talk about the the money in the bank matches. Um well first of all, the biggest story is the women, right? Um despite these weird couple of weeks where we're just kind of throwing them at, into shit. Yeah. That match is gonna be I'm I'm really interested about it because I don't think any of them have been in a ladder match ladder match. Non WWE. That's for sure. So I'm I'm just curious to see how that match goes because it could be a car crash. Well, it's well Natty was on because I've been I listened to a lot of the Edge and Christian podcast while I'm traveling, um, and she was talking about it. she's like, yeah, we're a little nervous about it because none of us have done it because you don't do those in WWE, right? Yeah, maybe they got lucky and did one on the Indies, but even that doesn't really happen a whole yeah. lot, right? I can't, and I, not, I can't think of like of, of a women's ladder match that I've ever seen. No. Or even heard of. No, no. Um like maybe intergender at this point, but yeah. it was some but it's so yeah, even that's rare. And I feel like that's something that would have happened by now. The way some of these promotions so, go. So I, I think it, it might be a good match. I, I don't know if it's going to be that it's going to have a good flow to it. Yeah, that's my that's my only thing I'm worried about with the match is how the how it's going to flow because it's I think it might kind of be like um, uh, DIY's last match, that uh, tag team ladder match that they had with Authors of Pain. Mm-hmm. It was a great match, but there it, it like had like hiccups and mm-hmm. stuff. And yeah, it just you know what I mean. Okay, and like I think it'll be a good match. I think it'll be a really good match, but I I just I don't think it's going to be as smooth as like you'd see with like 
uh, like, God, this is a terrible comparison, but the Hardy, uh, the TLC match at WrestleMania with the Hardys, you know, mm-hmm. where it, it's, it's just like, everything's like, they pre-set up the ladders and like, it's just like all smooth and. Mm-hmm. Right. It was, I mean, they were kind of in, inventing the wheel at that point. Right. Right. You know, no, so, no, no, no. Like, I'm talking oh, about, the, about this, the, last, this one. last one. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's any ladder match with the Hardys, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like it, it's they've been just through smooth. a few. Yeah. yeah. And that's, and that's, you know, there's a lot of. You know, it's a kind of a big deal to get thrown into something like that, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Um, w- with a lot of these guys, so um, I think it'll be good. I think there's enough good factors in there. I-, I worry because you know, okay, we got Charlotte, we got Becky Lynch, we got Natty. You know, they're you know they'll keep it together. You know what I mean? Uh, so what was it? Five girls in that one. Yeah. yeah. So they they didn't overblow this and throw like seven people in it. I hate when they do that. Um, we completely have six in the other one. Like there's enough there. That could get dangerous too. Yeah. If you, you well, yeah. I mean, especially some of those WrestleMania ones where they have like seven or eight people, like they get crazy and you keep forgetting who all is in there too. Yeah. It, it, with that many, it's so easy to lose track, especially when someone's going to someone's going to bump down to the floor and stay there to clear space for other people mm-hmm. you're out of sight out of mind yeah and you can be for like 3 minutes which is an eternity for these yeah. guys hey tamina's in this good for her I, I forgot you know we were just talking about yeah. her tonight because you know she, she's an enigma she's so background <laughs> unfortunately yeah. right um yeah. and i don't know maybe maybe she goes super fly on this one she's going to kill her girlfriend no oh, oh god Um. Uh. So the other ladder match. Oh, okay. Who? Who do you have as a pick for the ladies? Ladies ladder match. Um. Who do you want to see at this one? Uh, who do I think is going to win, or who do I want to win? I'll give each. I think Charlotte's going to win. I'd like to see Becky Lynch win, just because I don't think she's had a good push mm-hmm. yet. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I'd I'd like to see. I'm I'm with you on Becky Lynch, but yeah, I also think it's going to be Charlotte. Just uh, give her like she's the centerpiece of yeah. the women's division. Absolutely. Both shows, no matter what. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so I see them putting the belt on. You know, her getting the the briefcase, her getting the title, and everyone going after her again, and eventually it being Becky Lynch taking the belt from her. And and that's the perfect thing for her to return to heel yeah i mean she's kind of you know bored i mean she's she's goofing with becky lynch last week right which was kind of fun to see but still like yeah that's not gonna last it was like seth rollins like and roman reigns like teaming up to powerbomb whoever it was at the time yeah yeah you know even though they hated each other's guts at the time that's great in their former friends or whatever but you know it's she's better as you know a more flair type character yeah yes so which Works better as a bad guy. So. Yeah, but Alexa Bliss is a better Ric Flair than oh than, yes. than Charlotte. No, no offense, but I mean, I I am very very wrong about Alexa Bliss because <laughs> like it, I remember when they first did like the draft and like she first won the belt. Mm. I was not a fan of Alexa Bliss from from, and, from watching her like on NXT and like seeing the like. When when she became had to be one of like she went from being a background player to having to be a main player because mm-hmm. everyone else was taken up. Right. Mm-hmm. Like okay, I have to step up my game. That's what she did. Yeah. Like really, really strong, and then she got the call up, and it's like okay, I have to turn it up Wick. even more. Boom. Wick. And then oh, we're gonna make you the champ. Okay, let whatever whatever you need, I can do. And like mm-hmm. yeah, I literally have never seen anyone turn it up that much so fast and just like grab a hold of the role and, and own it. You, you don't even see, I mean, you know, how many people we've seen come in that are, you know, they can throw into stuff. Your Kevin Owens, your AJ Styles, your uh, Nakamura's, right? Who are like really experienced. Yeah. Which are probably. like, they've been at this for a while. Yeah, we know they can do stuff. Yeah. We're not going to throw them through the system. Right. Yeah. Um, Finn, for instance, I think it's another one. Um, you know, yeah, it, it, and, and that's what I love about NXT because every time they're like, "Oh, all the women are gone. What's going to happen? Oh, all the talent's gone. What's going to happen?" I was like, "No, somebody's going to step up." Yeah, because, well, that's also that's the purpose you know? of NXT. Yeah, is to build the next. Is to see who's and to see who steps up, and then it's not going to always work. 
Yeah, and NXT, yeah. I don't know where they're doing. It's like, give it, give it some time. Yeah. Like, everybody's got the training wheels on. Let's see what happens, right? And, and, and you know, and then I love when you get to that week where you're like, oh, there it is. That's the thing to watch out for, you know? Even stuff like watching the jobbers in the match, you know, uh, Sarah Logan, the former yeah. Crazy Mary, I thought had an amazing match with Peyton Royce, I think it was. You know, she's the under character on that one. Yeah. But you still can see glimmers of that. Um, Tucker Knight, who's now with, uh, doing the Wrecking Crew. Yeah. With o- Otis, uh, what's his face? Um, he was a guy, big guy, could move, was doing fun things in a match. And you're just like, maybe they're going to do something with that guy, right? Like he's throwing a lot, you know, you know, uh, uh, Shula, uh, Samson looked good yeah, when sure. he was in his, even though they kept calling him a bike, bicycling enthusiast or some weird shit like that, which just puzzled me. Um, but, uh, you know, great. And, and he's even a guy that's, I think, stepped up, you know, he's, he's fitting right in on Raw. Yeah. He's, yeah. I mean, he's doing continuous segments with Ambrose. So he's got to be doing something right. I know? love how awkward his segments are. Like, yeah, they're, like, they're very uncomfortable. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, and just like, cause he was doing, starting to do those in NXT. I'm just like, I don't like, he's not like singing well. No. Right. And I, it was like, okay, it's hard. You know, you're in front of an audience like that. It's not a setting, but, well, but I of, think one of my favorite ones was the out of tune guitar. <laughs> you know what I'm talking? Yeah. You remember? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, man, like, cause like, and if you know, I'm like, he can play guitar. So oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, why didn't he tune that up? But like, now looking back, it was supposed to be that way. Mm-hmm. Cause you don't, you don't want the people to like the songs, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, you know, so you, he's doing all the right things to get people to hate him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm kind of sad that we don't have drift away chance. Like that didn't carry over. Cause I thought that was just nuclear heat yeah. back in NXT, but they're still not nice to him. Yeah. yeah. So it was, and that's exactly how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. So it's great. I, There's not many people that get booed, like really, really booed. Yeah. On that show anymore. Mm-hmm. On any of them anymore. And he's a guy like, and, and 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 you know, I worry that we have, you know, we're like, okay, let's see him go, like kind of attitude because he's one of our guys from Pittsburgh here, and uh, but so I, I feel like for everybody else, it's the go away, what the hell, like new yeah. day, like new day when they started. So I with say, the robes, well, with the, with the with robes, everything. with, the, with uh, the robes and the positivity, and everybody's like, oh God, whatever. Yeah. You get the new day suck thing started, and and they just wrote it and kept writing it and turned it around, right? Yeah. Like I feel like this has well, that potential. With with the new day, I think they were also helped by um, table for three. Yeah, because that, that was that, that was, was the that time. was yeah that was like right like. They they're they they started doing the new day thing with mm-hmm. with the purple mm-hmm. and uh, be right around the time that everyone started like like it started turning around for them mm-hmm. was when they had the table for three and then that let everyone see what they were really doing mm-hmm. it's like oh oh they're fucking off yeah oh okay they're fucking off awesome okay I want to yeah. see I want to see more of them goofing around yeah. Yeah, you you're in on the joke and everything, yeah. and it just it just came came around, yeah. and the booking follows basically, right? Because I mean, they were they went back and forth as champions, yeah, you know, for the longest time because they were doing the free board. I mean, free board role is kind of a heel thing to do, right? And it turned into not so much, right? As yeah. they, as they came around, which is great. Also, nice covery for injuries. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, I, I think the main the main reason you don't get a 300 and 400 whatever title reign because somebody's going to get hurt sooner or later right yeah and you get to cover that up if it's like oh yeah just hang out with the trombone over here we'll, we'll, we'll take care of, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we got this over here just you know every tag team should be three people at least they don't ever go away <laughs> there shouldn't be ten, six man tag matches all the time no but they no, should no, have no, three no. people <laughs> no so many six man tag matches and no trios title what yeah. are they doing wwe <laughs> there wouldn't, yeah. Well, the problem is they're using all their singles competitors for the six man tag and, matches, and and also and also when they split the roster because like if you would have had you had the Shield, the Wyatts, New Day, um, I'm pretty sure there was one other three man group at that time. Evolution for a period. Uh, they were that's later. They they were before. That's right. Okay. Three MB. Uh, they they were definitely <laughs> were right. Hey, look how they're doing now. Well. 
most of them. Uh, all, all three of them. them. Oh, all, yeah. all three of them. About, uh, hey, uh, two of them have had major titles in the last year. Yeah. Um, won the majorist. Uh, you know, I mean, the other just got dirty deeds by a bear. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's not all roses, but I mean, that, hey, he's I feeding mean, his kids. That's what matters. He feeds his kids. Yes, exactly. I mean, it, it's one of those things. Like, like he Slater is like he was the sole survivor, and you're like, man, that guy's gonna lose his job soon because they're not doing anything. Oh, and then yeah. he turned it into a gimmick, and then yeah. <laughs> And then yep. they turned it around, and it's just, it was unbelievable. That draft was the best thing that ever happened to him. Yeah, and good for, <laughs> and good for Rhino having a job again. Yeah. I mean, especially since he's little... killing me with the cheese whiz. Oh, my God. <laughs> he's like a big fatty, man, just like going to town on like. <laughs> I, they were making fun of. Because, <laughs> crackers and cheese I mean, they were buddies, but they were making fun of his weight on, on uh, Edge and Christian la- last week. And it's yeah. like, he's still going to kick everybody's ass. He's oh, still yeah. a badass. It doesn't matter how fat his, his ass gets. It's just. <laughs> By the way, have you ever heard the Rhino thing about about uh, the the hotel beds? I, I every my traveling, I think of Rhino every time I'm in a hotel because I was. That's uh, weird. Zach Allen told me one time about how he makes his bed in the hotels. For, D- does he know that they pay people to do that? That's what and was the that question, they, and that they strip the sheets. That was the question. Uh, they might. Well, well it, it depends on should. it. And then they'll look. They said three days to save, unless you want them to. They like place this card on the pillow, and we'll change it every day you do it, like that thing. But anyways, and it was like a discipline thing, you know, because you know you start the day off right, and then everything like that. He's got you know he's he's a pretty interesting guy. So, um, did. But, on your last trip, did you make your bed every day? I at least uh, straighten uh, the sheets. I uh, seriously, I at least straighten the sheets. I uh, I put the like I don't want them to. I, last year I was um, out in Lebanon, PA. Which, by the way, if you ever need to fall asleep, go to Lebanon, PA, because there's nothing to do there. <laughs> uh, That's some of the places I've been in the last. But couple I, months. I, I was there for three weeks for uh, training mm-hmm. for the shoot job, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I'm like, I don't like, I don't care if they come in and I don't even care if they clean my sheets. I'm only going to, I'm going to be here three weeks. I'm, yeah. I'm fine sleeping on the same pillow. If it, yeah. You know, yeah. stay out of my room. I've, I've done that. If I'm not really crazy about the hotel and I have, you know, I always have equipment with me cause I'm, I'm doing video shoots and I'm just like, if I leave my laptop in there, I'm just like, I don't want anybody having a reason to come in here just in case. Yeah. And I'll just leave yeah. my privacy on the whole, the whole time. So just... I I did that in Dubai every now and then. So you don't know. I was there for a month, so it was like I every, it was like once a week. I would like just throw all my valuable stuff in the safe and. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but they had the combination. I didn't think of that. <laughs> well, they didn't take anything, so it was fine. Well, there you go. At least make it at least make it harder. Don't put it right out for them, right? Yeah. Well, now that we've given you all travel tips, uh, we're gonna come back with a big question. Lock I think your I shit can... up and make your bed. <laughs> <laughs> I need to pull up the chat. I realize I haven't had it up for a little bit. Um, but anyways, uh, what's up, everybody out there uh, in the chat room hanging out? Uh, Brandon, John. Uh, and by the way, when I was talking about ladder matches, Justin Idol pops up. I remember a uh, killer ladder match he had with Super Hentai back in the day uh, when I first started going there, to indie shows. Uh, there's uh, the one with him from CWF. Idol, Mantis, Devil Budokan. I think there might be one or two more people in there. Mm-hmm. If they're in the chat, they can because and they have enough brain cells left. They can tell you who. But it was it's it's pretty badass. It's a fun match. Yeah, it's it was one of Devil's last, but it's that's great. That's it, 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 that that was like one of those first like that was the first couple of shows I went to was anti Justin Idol at IWC. Oh. So, and that was like the first one, like, you know, because you hear the head butts with head tie, you know, <laughs> and sitting ringside, you're just like, my God. <laughs> so, yeah, there, there's something about, yeah, like, oh, oh, yeah, the, that wrestling's real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it, it's it's just, you know, one of those things that just, just draws you in and make you worry about the guys in there. Uh, on a side MMA note from Tina, just dropping this in. Mauro Ronaldo just got signed by Bellator. So good for him. I mean, I could, I'm just, he's good. I like, yeah, him. he's it's I, unfortunate. I, I, whatever yeah, happened. They should have yeah. got rid of JBL. And stuff. <laughs> but I love JBL on that yeah. show that they do. Yeah, that's fine. Put him on that show. Keep him off SmackDown. Yeah. I, keep, yeah. Keep him and Mauro apart. Yeah. That's all they needed to do. Wait, how about Mauro Ronaldo and 
Corey Graves calling everything. Yeah. Oh, I'm down. Oh, geez. I'm down. That'd be great. They were so good too. That's what made that's what made 205 live back in the day. I mean, it's still good, but yeah. you know, I like Tom Phillips, so Oh well. Isn't his name Mike? What? Who? Isn't Tom Phillips' name Mike? I don't even know anymore. Oh, that's right. Are you talking about your, what? 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 Are you talking about the what? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, check out our friend Slice on Broadway, sliceonbroadway.com, supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. I'm ignoring you. I I'm, I have to get through this ad. Uh, check them out here in Beachview. We're actually doing a pizza party. If you're in the area, drop by. Uh, uh, you know, We can split some pizza and stuff. Uh, 1 to 3 p.m. at the Beachview location right here along the tracks, sliceonbroadway.com. Also check them out on the Main Street down in Carnegie, PA, and the PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, feeding our guests here. Uh, for for a good long time uh, thanks to our friends down there for supporting the show uh, we're going to be back with a big question after this message sidekick media services we are your sidekick in business for social media video production and more find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com like getting nostalgia von eric clips in his head all the time if he only had a necromancer he would be set they could bring the Von Erics back from oh, the dead. Oh, okay. I thought this was like a Kevin Sullivan well, joke. No. The okay. Necromancer retired, so allegedly. Who? The Undertaker. Uh, he, no, he's a zombie. He's not the Necromancer. Oh, well, the, okay, the Necromancer, never mind. Yeah. If you only knew how we got to this part of the conversation, <laughs> it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Sorg here in the studio in Pittsburgh. Uh, studio full with, of course, Mutilator Larry so. and... <laughs> The most understated mutilator. <laughs> I wish, I wish we we could we throw him in a wrestling gimmick with this. <laughs> well, the mutilator. He's like, well, the mutilator. Mason that the sense. mutilator. Oh, that's he can cool. wear a uh, like a leather mask that has like a uh, like two bars across his mouth, and he mm. can use the mandible claw to finish. And, and he just, I'll be nihilistic about everything. Um, <laughs> that was the original gimmick. Like, no, I, the I just, wa- I just, Mason the I just won't sell a thing. It's like. Not not because that's like, the gimmick, just because he's that bad at wrestling. It's like, right? it's, it's, <laughs> it's like the um uh not yeah scary movie where the ladies get getting like killed by the scream guy, and she's like, oh, you're not doing it right. You just cut off my head, and it's not, really this is how you're gonna cut off my head mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> like that. Yep, yep. That could be that could be fun. You can mic him, FaceTime, whatever. <laughs> Apparently, we could do that now. <laughs> I, I swear, if somebody from an indie asks me to FaceTime to their sound system, I'm going to stab somebody <laughs> in the next couple of months. So that's 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 I'm putting that out there. Um, we got a question for Brandon in the chat room. We'll get to in a moment, but <laughs> I'm sorry. Potential big question that was just submitted. Does Jojo have a type? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's not Come the on. kind of question we do out here. That's not the kind of question we do out here. They're, they're, we try to do thought-provoking we'll, ones. We'll save that for the political More, show. We try to have fun with it. Yes, for political. That, is that political, though? That's something else. That's a different discussion altogether. I, I, we're not going to talk about that. Okay. I, 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 we're just not going to talk about it. That's, that's too TMZ for me. Um, but anyways, uh, the big question this week. We, we had a kind of an interesting idea about, like, you know, the six man tags and there's all these six man tags and everything like that. So so what if we did establish kind of a a six man tag new day, you know, we at least got a, a substitute situation, right? But you take current tag teams, Brizango, Usos, uh I forget American Alpha, the mysteriously unseen American Alpha. I don't even remember what show they're on anymore. SmackDown. Uh, are they on SmackDown still? No, right. they got dra- they got they went to raw. No, they're not anywhere. <laughs> they're 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 in limbo. Coming soon to an indie near you, apparently. Yeah, um, to BHS. Yeah, to BHS. Southpaw. They're on Southpaw. <laughs> Southpaw. Oh, yeah. Do dude, dude, please. Um. Anyways, uh. So so what if we established a six man tag or at least a a uh, system wide tag division freebird role? Who? What team? Well, pick a team. Who would you add as their third man to, to kind of flesh them oh, out? You have to add to those you teams? You have to add to a current team. Well, oh. I think it's fair to say that the only person that could team with American Alpha is Kurt Angle. Uh, Shelton Benjamin. Oh, is he, you put, is he clear? When, when he gets cleared, you put Shelton Benjamin in with back. them. 
I know he did, and then he the, he had a torn rotator cuff. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know if they actually signed him. Yeah, though. no, he signed. He, they're, they're, well, they're waiting for that to heal. You can okay. add him now, and he's already oh, okay. on but reserve then, because then, he's injured. Yeah. Then Shelton Benjamin. Yeah, you add. You, Absolutely. And, and then and then they're like the new version of Team Angle, where yeah. he's in the Kurt Angle role. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Um, who else? Who would be a good fit with other people? Do they do they have to be on the main on the actual roster now, or is, are we talking like anybody yeah, from? Yeah, any mostly, era? mostly. Okay. Yeah, because anyone you call up, then someone else is getting displaced. Well, in that case, um, I want Rico to join the Fashion Police. <laughs> That'd be great, actually. Yeah, that would be pretty. I don't yeah. know if he's actively wrestling. I don't anymore, know if he but is. Don't think he is. I mean, he could. I don't think it was an injury. So, but he's a cop. Yeah. I think I think he's just a cop. Have now. you seen some cops out there though? He, no, he was on Austin's podcast not long ago. Oh, really? Oh, I cool. think it was Austin. One of, it was not one of the podcasts. Um, yeah, but in, he in uh, Las Vegas last I knew. Yeah. So, but he would be good. He would be amazing. That would be good. Police. Like that that Rico character. He could be the chief. <gasps> and being a real life cop, it would work. Oh man! Yeah. This is great. This is a great idea. Um, All right. The headline for this show is, Hey, Road Dog, over here. <laughs> <laughs> Wavy hand emoticon. Yeah. He's, he's waving his hands like, Hey, 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 hey you. Hey. SOS. SOS. I might have to have you guys help me with notes after this. Um, Hardy's and Wyatt, renewed brood. Ooh. Eh, no. Because, I mean, you are, like... Why wouldn't you just put members Hart, the of Hart. the Wyatt family back with Bray Wyatt? That's true too. The Hardys and Wyatt? Yeah, because they were they were the brood. Um, no, Edge and Christian and no, they were they were, both. They were all part of the they brood. Were oh, really? At, yeah. at one point or another. Oh, yeah, the brood was pretty big at one that's, point. That's well. Oh, that's right. I don't Viscera think never... they were never the brood at the same time. No, they they like like Gangrel betrayed one for the other team or something like or. And 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 uh, like the wolf which, which, brood. Michael Hayes was you know, betrayed, which, which led to the uh, blood chalice on a pole ladder match. Never <laughs> happened, but it should have. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know, instead of fighting over money and um, what's her face, Lita? No, 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 no. Who it was? They they got that, the was they got the money and the services of uh, Gold Gold Dust Old Marlena. Boys. Marlena, thank you. Um, instead of and then Brian Pillman died, and then Brian, yeah. Right? He got he got Marlena for a month, and he was supposed to get her back at Bad Blood, and he died that morning. Oh, I I, I was talking about the the first ladder match between Edge and Christian and the Hardys. Why were they? Why was Marlena on the line? Because she was a manager at the time. Who she met? She was just I don't know. She was like this is before they did all the PMS stuff with her and everything. Oh, okay. I mean, it was oh it she was, was, uh, it was, it was post po- post gold dust. Okay, so um. But uh, yeah, that was like their first ladder match, I think, where they were, you know, eventually build up to TLC and everything like that. So, what's is that a mosquito? I don't know. Wicket's trying to eat it. Giant him. bug. Oh, the dog is attacking the bug. This is get great. a wicket side entertainment. We should put a webcam on that. Um, Terry Runnels, thank you. That's what that's what I meant. Um, I didn't think of one, <laughs> but you you guys came up with like three or four of them. So, uh, you know, I would take. Yeah, you guys had a good Brizango one. Um, yeah, Uzo's are already brothers, so I don't think that makes sense. Although in their current form, in their current form, you could throw an old Crime Time member in there, um, or R Truth, I think. Right? No, not R Truth. Not R Truth. Booker yeah. T. Ooh, because he's been to jail. You could say Ric Flair because he's been, been to jail. jail. You could, anybody who's been on a road trip with any of those people. <laughs> anybody been who's jail. been on a road trip with Ric Flair because they've been to jail. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Um, other than that, I would say, man, I, you could throw somebody at at Sheamus and Cesaro. That's actually, yeah, and, and because like, give them Rusev again. League of Nations again? Yeah, but but without the ones that suck. Which at the time, probably through no fault of his own, Wade Barrett and 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 uh, Del Rio. I mean, and they didn't have Cesaro. Cesaro makes every team work. Yeah, let's be honest about it. So I mean, you can probably throw Cesaro in a tag match with Doink and Dink, and you would love it. Doink and the Bear. Which Doink? Uh, ooh. 
for a challenge, later face Doink. No, 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 no. Who's under the makeup? Here's the thing. I don't know. Do you want the four? What era is which? Do you want the four in order? The chronological order. Sure. I'm okay. Curious. Oh, this is. I've never heard this. Really? Yeah. No, I've never. Listen, I have not done a deep dive on the doinks. <laughs> I, I'm just going to put this. I mean, you just, don't dive deep into the doinks? I don't dive deep into the doinks. <laughs> Show title. <laughs> I, I, but but it just, of the things that I've, I've been curious about in pro wrestling, I have not dived into now, the doinks. These are WWE doinks. These are, mm-hmm. you know, this Versus isn't, every... this, is, this is doink the clown, not doink oh, five. There were five in WWE. Um, this is not counting Chris Jericho that one time? Correct. Okay. Um, this is Doink the Clown, not Doink a Clown. That's what I refer to indie Doinks. They're Doink a Clown. Do you do you get mad? I get mad when I'm at an indie show and 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 WWE uh, you know Legend Doink the Clown comes out. If they say WWE Legend, yes. But if if they book it as Doink the Clown, whatever. Yeah, I don't like. I get what they're trying to do, and it's about trying to make money, mm-hmm. especially if it's like the promoter wearing the makeup. Okay. I gotta give credit if it's the promoter. I'm pitching and feel bad. And... He'd make a good doink. He'd, He'd make, make a great, He'd make a great doink. doink. I mean, he's halfway there already. Let's be honest. <laughs> but, uh, okay, in order, it's um, Matt Bourne, Steve Kern, um, Brooklyn okay. Brawler, Brooklyn Brawler. Uh, uh, Lombardi. Steve Lombardi. And Steve Kern, for those um, may know him as the Skinner. Yes. So that that's my... That's my uh, Steve Kern. Uh, Ray Apollo. Don't know him. Uh, he's a New York guy, but he was like, he, they used him on TV because okay. he was local and they could get him to. Wait, wait. TVs. So did they, was this like interchangeable sometimes? No. Like the it, only two it, who ever did doink at the same time were Matt Bourne and Steve Kern. When they were having like two doinks come out? Yeah. Okay. So like that WrestleMania. Yeah. Which is like my doink moment. Yeah. Yeah, that was my doink moment. You should, like when I think of doink, I think of the two yes. mirror doinks and tricking crush, right? The Kona crush, not not demolition crush. Same crush, or it, it, well, yeah, but I, I mean it's the same crush, but different. It's a different crush. Yeah, right. If WWF mid nineties was fucking confusing. <laughs> let's let's be honest about this. Between the doinks and the crushes. Which there were like three iterations of Crush, all the same guy, all the same guy, five different doinks, not the same guy. <laughs> <laughs> I finally get what they were doing with the Emma and Emmalina thing. <laughs> Do you? It was the early '90s nostalgia act. <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible idea because, like, evil Emma was such a great thing. Why are you, like why not just take that and run with it? Because they had a different writer the next week. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Well, oh, we got all and, those um, in the can. Like, you and fucked it up. You're the, fired. And then the last guy to be just a doink on TV was Nick Dinsmore. Like post Eugene or pre Eugene? Pre Eugene, yeah. he was a doink. Yeah. Like just when they just like had a doink, a doink for, for some stuff, reason. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Like doink in the background when they were yeah or or, 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 uh, or a spot well, in a battle royal or Le- the ballroom brawl. Legends battle royal was probably probably Dinsmore because I think I think there was or it might have been that that the the one at Mania. You want to have like Sheik win because he yeah because his the ankle. <laughs> um, yeah, that was what year was that? I don't know. God, that wasn't Mania Twenty, was it? No, it was like there was no doink in Mania Twenty. Was there? No, there wouldn't have been a doink in Mania. Was that 20. One, was that one of the teens? Probably teens. I feel like that was like a seventeen or something. So uh, right, it was either that would have been either Dinsmore or Apollo. Okay. Well, there you go. Your doink history has been filled out. Your doink card is full. We can keep going with this. Do we keep going with this? Nope. Um, nope. Oh, uh, we have answers to the big question rolling in. Um, add add Swan, Rich Swan, to the new day. Wait, wait, oh, yeah, we yeah but that's already three guys. Fourth, but I take a fourth. I take a fourth. And like and like him, the way the way he is interacting with like how their gimmick is. Yeah, that that's that's a lot of fun on TV right there. Add Ambrose to the Hardy Boys. Uh, it could work. I don't it know. could work. Okay, add Ambrose to the Broken Hardys. Maybe. But, like, his 
his insanity isn't like their insanity. Cause like his insanity is I'm a crazy person and their insanity is I have done all the fucking math. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Steve Kern also part of the fabulous ones and Stan Lane. Yes. In the what, Stan what, oh, okay. The, oh. fa- the fabs. Well, okay. They're the second fabs. The original fabs are Eddie Gilbert and Tommy rich. Okay. They split up and then they do the new fabs, which was Kern and Lane. Right, mm-hmm. and what you they were they were the a they they were the a team show, a show team, the b show team was the Rock and Roll Express, right? So hey, we want to be like those guys we see on TV, the Rock and Roll Express. So we're the Midnight Rockers, right? Sean and Marty, mm-hmm. right? Sean Michaels, biggest star of all time. Is he really just Stan Lane, or is he really just Steve Kern? True. Because that's where it all comes from. It all hmm. comes from the fabs. Hmm. There's your there's your deep dive. <laughs> yeah, that was too deep that's, for me, man. That was <laughs> that, that's actually something that Stan Lane has said. Okay. Yeah. I, I get sketchy on this on the whole rock and roll express southern wrestling. Like I get real sketchy. That's, that's why I love what you, network because this is like all new to me, right? It's just like it's just like mid '90s, mid early '90s. WCW is all new to me because I never watched. Well, you shouldn't have. Well, good, <laughs> I was I was saved from it. Thank thank you not having cable. Um, uh, Wheels, Thug Rikishi and the Usos. We did Ooh, yeah. face all of them. Yeah. So that would make sense. I forgot that he did th- the Thug version. The, the the I did it for the Rock uh, version. Um, I did, no, I did it for the people. I did it for. Uh, well, he said I did it for the people. I did it for the Rock. Right? I got one. I got Isn't one better than that. No? Mojo Rawley tagging with Scotty Tuhati and Rikishi. Well, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> no, that would be no room for Grandmaster Sex. <laughs> no, he's the forgettable one, he's right? Fine. Yeah. He's, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm not. Sorry, 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 Brian Christopher. Um, oh. Let's see, Harrison Wyatt. I think I'm back into this. So, uh, thank you everybody for for dropping. Oh, how about how about AJ Styles with uh, Carl Anderson and. Uh, Luke Gallows. Uh, Luke Gallows. Yeah, I yeah, <laughs> got the got the horns up. Yeah, <laughs> I almost so so I ran. I, I saw somebody with a bull club shirt at Denny's yesterday, and it wasn't after a wrestling show. There, so there's no context because you know wrestling shows when there's not a wrestling show or wrestling shirts when there's not a wrestling. The, says the guy that's been walking around all day with the Jackson Argus shirt on. Yeah, but no one knows what that. The, is. Nobody knows what that is, right? It was like oh, maybe he's a rapper or something. I don't know. That tell him about Canadian dry jacks. He does. He does country music. I country think. music, exactly. Right. He was. You'd just... be surprised at how many Canadians there are in the northern panhandle of West Virginia. It's like they're Palm Springs. <laughs> it must. It must be. <laughs> it's the same distance, uh, right? I mean, well, I... Ty Cross was originally Canadian. Edric Everhart was originally Canadian. Uh Jackson Argo, Ar- Argos is uh, is Canadian, mm-hmm. and there have to be a few more in there. Right, right. And it's a, I mean, like his gimmick is like he passed through Canada for the most part, right? Like, like, isn't that? I don't know. I don't know. Anything. I'm not sure. Like, I'm not really. <laughs> I, here's what I know: the the dude is charismatic as a motherfucker. Holy shit! Yeah. Uh, so like, just give the guy a mic, let him do his thing, and mm-hmm. let him let him talk into you wanting to see him get his ass beat. I talked to his mom in Wheeling. Really? <laughs> I did after the show. And I'm just like, your son's going to do fine. Yeah. I'm just like, dude's going to be okay. <laughs> just don't worry about it. You know? uh, anyways, that's, that's enough putting over Jackson because, you know, he needs it. Uh, <laughs> Boy, you're not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and I do. You've seen him on social media. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen anybody post so many pictures of themselves that doesn't have their own media team. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, if, if you know, if, if he's not going to do it, who will? Although I have to say, I made this comment today. I know we're getting indie guys. I'm sorry, but uh, I made this comment because RC Dupree took a bunch of his footage, including the stuff we've done with IWC, and put it over Nirvana. Huge Nirvana fan growing up. It's like the perfect circle having my footage under Nirvana. Mm. I just really appreciate that. So RC Dupree. May have risen to the top of my favorite of Team Storm. Just putting that out there. Wow. 
Just point Boy, out you're going to break up the band with that statement. I, I, I know, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> who was it? Who, who, who was it before that video came out? Easy, Yoko. Uh, <laughs> it was it was Jackson. Previously, uh, Pollock, because I had seen it before. Uh, and then it became Jackson because he's rookie of the year. Uh, and he gave is he really rookie of the year? He's, he's I from why I, I don't know. Nebraska keeps saying he, he stuffed the ballot box every time he comes out, but uh, he has the T-shirt, so it's got to be real. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm going by that. There t-shirt. was a question. It, it, this was a question that was submitted for the big question, but I think I think warranted some other discussion just because I think you know people don't know you know uh, uh, about these things. So our uninformed slash informed opinions will will kind of fill this up. So so no no. Oh, well, there's another comment in here. Opening match of Raw reminded uh, Brandon of Lesnar versus Undertaker match, but they brawled through the you know both the ring and the backstage and everything. Yeah, I mean we we've, we've seen this before, um, and it works. I love every time they do it for the most part. Uh, he was asking about sporting events in WWE and if, if they kind of tie into each other. Like, do the writers write the show the day of or a few days in advance? Um, you know, of course, the NBA Finals were this Monday night during Raw. Um, I We have commented, I know, on the Raw wrap-up about, like, oh, well, th- that was weird that this happened at 9.45. It's like, yeah, that was halftime for the game, right? Um, okay. Because I was looking at the Observer earlier today, or mm-hmm. earlier today when I woke up. And um, they mentioned that, like, they started off. No, it wasn't for today because it wouldn't have mattered today because it would have been. Wait, two, yeah, Monday. So that Monday was when the cha- uh, the, the final right. the final game of the right. finals was. They started off with Lesnar and, and Samoa Joe to get that before the game started. Hmm. So do they pay attention to that? Yeah. And you can kind of, I mean, we all kind of comment, like, this show is just kind of rolling and not kind of working for us, right? And it had a weird flow to it, yeah. which, <laughs> right? Yeah, it really but, did. But, I mean, we've talked about, they don't book that thing for somebody to sit down for three hours. They really yeah. don't. And three hours is, like, a three-hour wrestling show is hard. Like, putting shows together, I try and, like, I try and keep Black Diamond Limited to two and a half at tops Mm -hmm. because like if you start, if you start your last match at the two hour mark, you're all right Mm -hmm. because they're probably not going to go a half hour. Right. But (laughs) yeah, usually (laughs) you cross the fingers. Yeah. Um, so like, because the people don't want to just sit there and sit there and sit there and they get tired and they get, yeah. yeah. Right. So, um, you know, to write a three hour live TV event every Monday and it's not just three hours. There's, they, they tape other stuff before, right? Um, I don't wait. They used to do superstars. I think, you know, I think they still do do superstars. So there's going to be one or two matches before. The three-hour event goes And you off. think about it, even SmackDown is a three-hour affair, too. Yeah, because of 205, 205 Live. Live. But they end with, you know, as Cruiserweights were called before, the car crash. Yeah. Well, I mean, even when we when we went to SmackDown, like, we were getting up and, like, stretching and walking around and stuff. Yeah. During yeah. the show. Just to, just because, it, I mean, it's a long time just to sit there. Yeah. Right, right. And, and that, you have commercial in, in the breaks. Arena, and, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, imagine, like, seven hours of WrestleMania. I mean. That, that I think, would be different. Like, that... I wouldn't have a problem with because like of what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But absolutely. I'm also, you know, WrestleMania also doesn't have all the vignettes. Like you're there to watch wrestling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're not going to, you're not going to sit through gimmicky segments. It's a or, special event. It's yeah. a lot of energy. So you're energized being there in the crowd. Right. You're not just like, I'm just going to see a wrestling show. And <laughs> yeah. Man, and, and also, yeah, it's like, it's going to the Super Bowl. It's mm-hmm. the big event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's it's different and can exist outside and, and the normal rules. You know, there's going to be the musical performance for you to go to the bathroom and stretch your legs. That's what I completely did during Puffy that one year. So I mean, it works. Thank you, Puffy, for the pee break. Show title. Um, <laughs> so three, two, one battle out out uh, out there. Where Tina's at says they have shows that are uh, around three plus hours, but that's in front of a twenty-one plus crowd. Uh, rather than an all ages show, does that does that matter? I think it so. can. Yeah, but I mean, if, if you're going too late and people are drinking hard, yeah, yeah. 
was well, like you know i mean the kswa shows they're at a bar yeah and there's like they were they had, well, the first show i went to i think was it an anniversary like the, i think it was their first show of the year and i forgot what the special event was it might have been an anniversary show and they had like 500 people on there yeah and probably that, but that's, two, 200 were standing and drinking that's normal yeah that's normal for their events uh yeah. it's spirit they, they they pack them in it's one of the few venues you can go to and have a beer while you're watching wrestling mm-hmm. um and Beer and wrestling go, you know, hand in hand, in mm-hmm. my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think, and, and Brand's saying about like, re- you know, sporting events happening all the time. But I think when you get to something like the finals of Monday Night Football, those are draws. Yeah. Those are ratings draws. Yeah. That are competition for you. Yeah. And, and, you know, granted, we've, we've, I think we had this discussion maybe last night on or off air about, well, everything is competition for a WWE Raw and SmackDown, right? these days with the the entertainment stuff but those are still the massive draws those are last few tv massive draws and and you also you also have to look at like the numbers like people tune in for monday night football people a lot of people tune in for the nba especially the finals Mm -hmm. hockey doesn't have the audience um but but it's getting there yeah it's it's building growing Um, at least in pittsburgh you're gonna have problems the super indies suffered from that a couple years so They didn't this time. No, thankfully. And I, anyone who went to that show, whatever you paid for your ticket, you got a bargain. Mm-hmm. Like that was an amazing. I can't, I can't show. wait to edit this show. I haven't even I haven't even looked at anything like that. Um, but yeah, like so, like any anything, any big national sport on TV, any of the big four sports on TV, a, uh, are are a ratings draw, mm-hmm. and that hurts. You know that that hurts wrestling, it, mm-hmm. and and so they they always want to try and get an edge on whoever. Because as big as WWE is, they're still not that big. I mean, NBA, uh, NFL is an institution of you know a hundred years, right? So they, I mean, they own a day of the week. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah, I, I mean that that that's a consideration, you know. Um, so so it makes sense to book around it. I mean, holidays are a little different shows than than other shows, yeah. you know. Um, it, it just makes sense, you know. You don't throw away the money nights when you're not going to get it, right? So so I, so hopefully I get, it kind of gives you an idea how, how that works a little bit. Um, so with that, I think PWG has super long shows too, don't they? Pro Wrestling Gorilla? They might. I've never... But again, they have an insane, rabid... Falling and they're like charging hundred and fifty dollars a ticket. ECW shows were notoriously long. Yeah, yeah, they would start at like eight, and they go to like one. I would love uh, worked a couple charity shows at like schools, and I know when I whenever I saw something that had nine to twelve matches, I knew I was in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> just especially those that where they were like, how many matches were on this year's WrestleMania? Do you remember? It was like some like it was like seventeen. Yeah, it was like twelve. It might have been 12, 12, twelve. Twelve to fifteen. A lot. Ish. There was a lot. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm like counting the pre-show too. Yeah, like, yeah absolutely. Because I, I I still I still can you know as far as WrestleMania goes, people were saying like oh so and so is not on WrestleMania. They're on the pre-show. I'm like that's WrestleMania. They're in front of you know they're they're in front of the live crowd. But if you're not on the pay-per-view matches, yeah, there's a Looking, looking at it uh, from the standpoint of being the talent on the shows, mm-hmm. if you're on the pre-show and you're on the main show, the main show gets a pay-per-view bonus. Mm-hmm. Pre-show doesn't. If this is affecting my bottom line, I want to be on the main show. Mm-hmm. Well, Makes sense. Because it was always seemed like they threw a battle royal in to get everybody on the show, and now they're doing it on the pre-show. Yeah. So. But still, you know, you think about because I think there was a thing about the pre-show was the highest rated thing on USA last year. Wow. Like the, that hour that they do of the pre-show on there is like the most watched thing that I believe it. I, yeah, I can I can definitely. Oh, do they say how many people were uh, viewed WrestleMania? Do they keep track of that? I, they usually announce it. But I, I hadn't seen it come up. But usually you go around that like that quarter call, quarterly call they do for financials. They'll talk about it. Yeah. So especially if they're doing good. Uh, so I mean, they broke like a million last year or the year before or something. Oh, it's gotta so, be more than a million. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, they, I, I haven't heard lately. They have more than a million I people think watch Raw. WWE Network has gotten. Um, past that point that we're worried about it 
because those first yeah. that first year was like, ah, we don't know if they're going to be able to break even, and they pulled out of the pay per view market. They're screwing themselves over, and now they're in every market, and I think they're doing just fine. And the content creation on there, I think, is enough to to get that that going. So they don't do pay like technically they don't do pay per view at all anymore. I think they do. It's I don't, real small. Yeah, it, it's still, and then there was some providers that took them off because they were just like, screw you, you're, you know, taking this away from us. Uh, so they, they, they abolished it, but I'm pretty sure like WrestleMania, you can get on pay-per-view. So, but then again, what is it like 60, 70 bucks? Yeah. As opposed to nine. Yeah. As opposed to yeah, $10 a month. Yeah. 120 a year for for every pay-per-view which is yeah. a lot of people. which i think when you buy the card you can actually get a couple months free now potentially yeah. so yeah you can get the off month. there's like i think this past month was you got the two pay-per-views free well this the this past spectrum. year um if you got like if you were a new subscriber you actually got mania for free oh really yeah, yeah if it, it was in, basically if when, it was in your if it was in your month or your three month or whatever it was right then you got Mania. so they'll free. tell you hey if you sign up today you're within that 30 days and you got these two pay-per-views, right? Because the just the math works out, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's what they sell you on. Or like Mad Mike says, I pay nine ninety nine for 205 Live and NXT and I get the pay-per-views for free, so yeah. I'm happy. So, I mean, there's something for everybody. And that's and now I feel like we're a freaking commercial for them, but yeah, whatever. It's hard to not be. Like, if, if, if you get that much use and enjoyment out of, out of what they do, why wouldn't you put it over? Right, right. Lucha Underground. That was, was the one thing this week. So there was something about like uh, uh, Lucha Underground podcast being bought off by Lucha Underground <laughs> to put them over, <laughs> and and that's how we kind of came up in the conversation ah. somehow. So which it was like, please pay <laughs> us. I, we, I cool, all right, you know, we're we have a Patreon page, guys. What did you learn? And in the chat room too, what did you learn from wrestling this week? Oh god, I'm going last. You're going like, <laughs> I'm putting uh, on the spot. Every every week, I'm like these Jake, past couple and, weeks, I'm not you, prepared for this question. You, I know it's coming. And of course, you saw you were at Super Indie yeah. and, and around everything. You, you know, you're into business and everything. So, you know, anything around that doesn't have to be the mainstream. Just wrestling in general. Oh uh, yeah, I'm trying to. Um, and, 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 and we haven't even mentioned because I mean, I guess this this is a mainstream news item. Uh, Adam Cole. In Super Indie and IWC. Yeah, won the Super Indie title, won the tournament. Won the tournament. Oh, spoiler, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. It's just all over social yeah. media. Um, I was going to watch that next week. There were cameras for some kind of reality show. It's still worth show, it. Uh, which I... Understand. From what I... from I took a guess earlier in the day, and then the uh, then yesterday I got... Like, I read something that confirmed who, who I thought it was. Mm -hmm. And apparently it was Bourdain's CNN crew. Okay. Because he was here in Pittsburgh filming something, right? Because that—that's—that's that's what I uh, uh, Missy was like. Yeah, uh, Traegar set up and said Anthony Bourdain's going to be at at at, at uh, in Super Indie, and they announced that there was going to be a reality show or there are national, no, national television. television show. And then there was another post somewhere about Anthony Bourdain's in Pittsburgh. Why is he here? You know, what some speculation article. I didn't read it. And then Missy's like, so I think they they were here for this or this. And I'm like, I'm like, you know what? That makes sense. Yeah, he, he's like, shooting uh, parts unknown here his yeah. tv show yeah yeah and they, so, they were keeping the because i saw an article on it they said they're they keeping the locations pretty like quiet well they we figured out one of them so yeah. but, i mean now i never saw him no, at the no, event no but like so the, these guys you know, they rolled up yeah probably probably right around the second match mm-hmm uh, cause I stepped out to get some air and this van rolls up and these guys start rolling out with all this equipment. I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I love all the pictures. I see these guys with giant cameras and I'm like, I didn't hire those guys. <laughs> <laughs> and why is he in the ring in, our, in the middle of our shot? So I'm going to have to figure that part out. So that'll be fun. But, uh, did you learn anything from super Indie? <laughs> Just put a giant bear uh, costume over it. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever your problem is, put a giant bear costume over Sticker. it. There you go. Um, yeah, uh, do not do not doubt the drawing power of a solid card because mm -hmm. they ran out of chairs. Wow, there was like a thousand thousand people there. That was the first time I believe um, that they sold out the floor. Mm -hmm. Where yeah, were they at? Uh, they were at court time. Yeah, yeah, in the regular building. The regular building. I mean, I mean, it's not like they're going to run out of space. 
Right. But that you can run out like, yeah, they, they pulled out all the bleachers, everything. Yeah. For those on the, 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 the area that they're in is three basketball courts wide. And there is a, you know, the ring and the, and the, they have, they're the boxing lights over it and everything. So it works. It's nice and dark and it, it's a new, it's a good, cool atmosphere. It doesn't feel like a basketball, yeah. uh, uh, you know, area. Um, but you know, but again, you know, Jeez, I remember when the, the Ric Flair one, and, yeah. and I would never seen it go halfway across the other <laughs> court like that. You yeah, know? so well, like, it wasn't spread out that far. No, no, no. no. Yeah, but like, because no, they, no. they had that set up for for the line. Yeah, uh, with with Flair. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, people, people, they they were packed in. They were, like I said, they ran out of chairs, which good. that's a good thing. That's a good, good problem thing. to have. Good problem to have. They keep selling tickets. They they ran out of tickets. As in physical tickets. Physical tickets. They started stamping people's hands. Wow. That's great. Yeah. That's amazing. And it was a stack card. It had Adam Cole. It had DJ Z. It was the first match. Yeah. Was was those two. It had Joey Janela. It's been amazing on, on the indies. Uh, Mark Mike Orlando was new to me. Yeah. Uh, Cole Cabana, who... He's Cole Cabana and and a super indie staple from yeah. the yeah the he won sec- he won the second the one second one yeah yeah he was in the first one won the second one that's right uh you know this is a tournament that has had I, I keep going back go 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 look at super indie ten and you see half of the people on there are on two hundred five live today yeah you know uh, it's 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 an incredible thing and it's good to see that it came out so well um, hopefully one of these years I'll be able to go back I haven't <laughs> been a super indie for like four years uh because of my schedule yeah i be my normal my normal schedule uh like i wake up at six o'clock at night yeah and i'm up all night go you know going to work overnight i come home i sleep all day right because it's just easier for me Mm -hmm. uh and it makes it but i work saturdays so it makes it hard to wake up in time to get to an event Mm -hmm. uh this one here i'm like yeah like i went to a super indie last year and I'm like, yeah, I don't want to miss this one. It's good. I, I'm glad that they're, you know, sounds like wrestling is forefront on these, uh, uh, yeah, you know, as a tournament. There's not, and I don't know how this one turned out, but, but you know, there's not a lot of goofy shit, you know, going on, right? So. <laughs> yeah, not really, no. no. I, like, I, I just, a tournament, a big tournament, and you ended the screw job. And I, I love that we've gotten away from that kind yeah. of thing. So, because there was, there was a couple of years that were real funky. Uh, so, but still like you like seeing all the talent and everything like that. Um, was there a thousand people there? Uh, give or take. Really? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if that was a joke or not. Uh, yeah. Uh, wheel said a uh, thousand people at IWC, 195 down the road at RWA, which that fills the gymnasium. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. That fills and, the damn gymnasium. And also like RWA, like they, they do something really, really smart. Like, they don't book the same talent. They don't, hey, these guys are hot and IWC is using them. Let's get them. F that. Let's get our own guys. Let's make it hot. And they do. And yeah, yeah and that, and that's that's how that's how you can have two companies in the same area both do well mm-hmm. because I'm not going to see the same people at both places. I don't have to make up my I have to make up my mind which show am I going to if they're the same night. Right. But I don't have to go I don't have to look at Oh, they have uh, Bob the Mutilator or Larry the Mutilator. That's your brother in it's your tag team, right? Yeah. Stealing my gimmick, right? And I don't, I, but I don't have to go. Am I going to go here to see him, or am I going to go here to see him? Who gets my money? Now it's I just make up my mind. I like this talent more. I'm going to I'm mm-hmm. going to that mm-hmm. show, yeah. or I'm more interested in this one. I'm going to go to that show. And it's also nice because I mean we're seeing a lot of crossover of guys that were in one group and and coming over and and kind of renewing, yeah, you know what they're doing and and playing in another another playground. You know, like I just saw J Rock and Jason Gorey from RWA last month. Just edited it like two weeks ago, and I'm just like, you know, again, guys that I saw doing great stuff when I first started indie wrestling, and they they're still killing it out there. So, you know, it's good, good stuff. Live and well. Don't say wrestling sucks in Pittsburgh because there is you you, you can't it's, these days. There, there's too much there's, awesome stuff going. There, there, there's too much. There's too much wrestling. Too much different wrestling in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. For you to say it sucks, it just might not be your week. Your show might be next week. Exactly. So go to that one. Exactly. Go go to the one that you like. Yeah, yeah I like them all. I go, I go to KSW. I go to PWX. All, all of them. All of them. I find entertainment in every one of them. You know, for different reasons. So, all right. And I love when I I run into people and they're like, "There's wrestling in this town." And I'm like, "Oh fuck yeah! Let me tell you a story about wrestling." Larry, what did you learn? We gave you so much time. 
You, oof, not enough. <laughs> well, Wheels learned that Matt Carlin's looks good with the championship belt over his shoulder. Friend of the show, the Rev got a tag team uh, championship over at RWA. You know what? I did learn something. I learned that Wheels thinks that Matt Carlin's looks good with the championship Alrighty, title belt over his shoulder. Alrighty, that's that's good too. Thank <laughs> you so much for that. Um, I learned. <sighs> I learned that I love WWE's version of a podcast uh, with bringing to the table, and uh, and and I love they have confidence. I love bringing to the table JBL. Yes, and and it, it yeah, it, it it works so well. It, it's fun. They're they're having fun with each other, and 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 still, anytime, whether it be the announcers, whether it be the people in the ring, if they're enjoying the job they're doing, it just conveys. And they're having the same... They're not afraid to pull punches with those conversations. They ask about the broken characters with the Hardys. They're talking about uh, Randy Orton um, um, shitting on the flippy wrestlers, right? And and showed his discussion with Bubba Ray Dudley, who is, last I knew, a trios champion over in Ring of Honor. So, like, they're not, you know... They're talking about Ambrose's... Uh, pointless title run yeah you like that, you're like that. Or, or or what's non- wrong with i'm ba- sorry non-memorable what's wrong with bailey's run yeah. right now you know and and yeah. and, and it's just yeah. incredible that they're they're going down this line like we yeah. get a little bit like you know the, we love the round tables the table for threes and stuff like that um i i just enjoy that they lift the veil and let them get, run with something like this so if it was a podcast version of it i'd probably listen on itunes to be quite honest you know, and just, you know, Graves is great with that and, and, and drives with JBL so well, or at least keeps him on the reins uh, a little bit, maybe. I did learn something. Oh, did you? I listened to uh, Jericho's podcast with uh, um, Gallows and Anderson. Mm. <laughs> Have you heard this one? They were. D- I'm sure it was fun. They were shit faced. Oh, shit. With uh, one of the colognes, and they ended up calling Carlos Cologne. Oh no! <laughs> I heard about this. This is funny. Oh no! It's worth a listen. Okay. All <laughs> they, right. Wait. They got a fictitious wrestler booked in they Puerto did. Rico. They did. <laughs> they did. They booked. Um. Uh. Oh God. What was his name? <laughs> I can't remember his name. But still, that's Reptile. Reptile. That sounds like a Lucha Underground character. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but like they were dropping F bombs left and right. And every time they dropped it, they just auto filled it with a fart. So it's just like, it's like just a bad episode of Terrence and Phillip where it's like, (laughs) they're just talking the entire time and just fart noise, fart noise, fart noise. Like you can't, you can't comprehend it in like a single sentence in the entire podcast. And they say frequently, Oh, I think Anthrax joins them at some point. Like the band. Yeah. Um, they're in Germany. Um, yeah, for download festival. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, they so they um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, they they were saying that like repeatedly on the podcast that you need to watch this while drinking. You can't watch this li- or listen to this while drinking. You can't listen to this sober. <laughs> okay, that's that's a good to note. Yeah, because they're like every time somebody dropped an F bomb, they took a shot or something like that. Um, from the chat room, Brandon learned that Cena might become a double champion on both shows. He is a free agent. That means he can win all the belts. Happy Fourth of July, guys! <laughs> That's a well. I think we'll get more into that discussion as we get closer to that event happening. Tina learned that Vic Joseph is a play-by-play guy for Two Hundred Five Live now. Is that that's the Vic that used to work with Dabrowski, right? Well, I have no idea. I know that the no one on. I have to look this up because there was um. Oh, what is his name? Maybe they changed his name or something. Um, because there was a Vic that that worked uh, Prime Wrestling, and he's been he was doing some stuff in New York, and I know he just got hired. So um, again, another one of the the well, at least area guys, I guess, uh, getting getting up there. So um, so let me know how that goes. Okay. Were you listening to any announcing tonight, or what's that? Because apparently it wasn't Tom Phillips anymore. I didn't notice. Didn't notice. They just they on two hundred five. I didn't actually. No, I. Because I had the Facebook stream up, I didn't. I wasn't actually listening to it. Tonight. Oh, that's right, that's yeah. right. So, all right, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, I hope they didn't get rid of Tom Phillips. Eh. Maybe they got Mike somebody. Mike somebody. I can't remember his name. His name's Vic. Mike. Vic. Mike. Vic. From Raw. Mike. No, Vic. What? What? Are we doing a bit? <laughs> Guys, <laughs> thank you so much, Brandon. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, no more questions. We're ending the show. We have another show to film. Uh, <laughs> I gotta go home, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, of course, Mutilator Larry. He's on the internet in some form. Uh, we'll he'll be more it's publicly. It's fictitious internet. He'll be on. He's on the fictitious internet. We'll give. Well, you it's a real internet. His real. It's just, nope. We'll give you not his. That's the one I'm on. It's <laughs> fake. Fake internet. He's on the fake internet. Fake internet, you guys. Um, lame. Uh, <laughs> He does stuff. He builds things. Actually, if you want to know more about him, um, look for the awesome chat where we interview him. Shameless plug. Uh, spoiler alert. Don't look for the one that says Larry. We'll leave the rest to you. Jake Garrett, where can people find you online? Or uh, otherwise? Well, uh, at Hansu Jen on Twitter. At Thomas Idol, Suicidal, Genocidal. First three letters of each word. You know, Sabu. I think I spelled this wrong. No, H O M S. You thought... did. Oh my God! Did you spell him? <laughs> that, is... <laughs> that is so. <laughs> I asked you if it was right. <laughs> oh, I didn't look. <laughs> How Miss Jen? <laughs> yeah, that's. I wonder who that guy is. I have no idea. <laughs> that's fine. I enough. hope people are He's tweeting good. at him. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have a body. Getting, getting new followers. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, we'll fix. We'll fix it at post. That'll uh, work. No. No, we won't. <laughs> I need to tell. I need to tell my people to follow him <laughs> on Twitter. Tell your people. <laughs> get along. You'll get along fine. Just fine. We'll get the right one. Maybe the other one too. Who knows? Okay. Where else can they find you? Uh, they can find up? me at Black Diamond Wrestling uh, all through events in July uh, in the uh, upper pan uh, northern northern Panhandle of West Virginia. Uh, probably a couple of uh, IWCs here and there, maybe an RWA if I have a night off and can make it. You just you just scan the crowd and you see you see Jake just sitting way in the back in, in the back looking and like, like hey, looking for Jake's look. here. I gotta go say hi. <laughs> that's that's how it goes. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so awesome, awesome. Anything cool coming up? Anything else? Uh, I'm trying to think. Wrestling, 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 wrestling. Like nothing. There's, uh, let's see, Jul- Sh- should I plug the shows I have coming up? If you want, uh, July second, Fallensby Park, Fallensby, West Virginia, uh, one o'clock bell. Uh, s- July seventh and eighth in McMechan, West Virginia, McMechan uh, Lock In River Fest. Uh, you got a show uh, Friday in the evening, Saturday in the afternoon. Uh, I think 7 p.m. Friday night and 4 p.m. Saturday afternoon. And um, at in Bel Air, Ohio on the 15th uh, at 1 p.m. at the Plastic Brick Museum. Can't call it Lego because that's copyrighted. No, seriously. It's a non... Is it non-sanctioned Lego museum? Non-sanctioned Lego museum. But it's wow. Pretty, but it's Where pretty awesome. Uh, Bel Air, Ohio. It's right across the river right. from Wheeling. That's a few reasons to go check it out. That's just across from Wheeling. Yeah. I've never heard of this. Yeah, a little town called Bel Air. Um, oh. I had a friend that lived over in Steubenville, like right no, by. No, it's way it, south. So. It's way south. It's way south. It, it, yeah, that, because like Steubenville is an hour or a half hour north. Man. Steubenville, Weirton, or a half hour like north. kind of weird thing he would have told me about, too. Um, um, and, then, and then the important one, uh, 7, uh, 7 15, July 15th, that evening. Uh, stomp out cancer at uh, at the uh, stronghold in Connellsville, PA, where I will be appearing and wrestling. But I can't tell you what the match is yet because it hasn't been announced. Mm. I know what it is. I just I can't. I think say. I heard a little bit about it's this match. going to be awesome. It's I heard things. Get there early because we're we're going to be up early. But Some, it's going to be awesome. Something going to be on a pole. Nothing is going. Judy Bagwell will be on a pole. No. Um, I wonder what her booking fee is. She alive. I wow, that got sad. It, it it's a good question. It's, it's a fair a good question. I, I mean, don't know. It was, I, was, I mean, it wasn't joking. I didn't know. I'm gonna Google it. And to my knowledge, there will be nothing on a poll. But you never know. Yeah, you never know what this cast it could of characters get, it could get changed. A lot of people, a lot of people, our friends of the show are gonna be on there. Um, we are gonna be there as part of Indie Wrestling US uh, filming the event. Uh, so so we'll be around. <laughs> so you know it, it's gonna be fun i love these charity shows and there's so many yeah. happening this year and uh it's great because it, it's uh you know 
awesome mix of wrestlers from around that don't usually get the you know again yeah. play in the play, same playground yeah and uh I, I, that's a bad you okay no it's a great it's a it because you know if if you live in the first ward you don't often go to the third ward playground this is true <laughs> you're gonna get chest flexor on a pole Hey! Oh, I wish. Throw, that it, out there. Awesome. Throw it out there. All right, guys, and of course, Sorgatron uh, on the Twitters, <laughs> Mayhem Show on the Twitters as well. Please check out everything live streaming here Tuesdays at 10 p.m. I uh, just uh, awareness. Hey, I'm traveling again because that's the season. Uh, hopefully, we'll be done with this as we get into July. Uh, so we may be on some form of Google Hangout next week, as I will be in Nebraska. And who knows what the internet is like there, or if they even know what that is. So we'll find out when that happens. Um, so uh, check that out. Keep an eye on the Twitter and the Facebook. We'll, we'll post whatever link ends up happening around that. Thank you so much to the chat room. Brandon, Tina, Wheels, and everybody else has popped in through the night. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.